Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, welcome to uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions. Um, each week uh, we meet here um, to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google+, and uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Welcome, Tim. Uh, I didn't know that you were coming. <laughs> All right, with, with us tonight, we have um, uh, Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim is uh, um, CEO of uh, OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he's also a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. Um, he resides uh, about uh, 100 miles north of London in Corby. Um, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's uh, also a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. And um, Richard Hearn. Uh, Richard Hearn uh, is... Uh, um, what do you do, Richard? You're um, a, a troubleshooter for higher echelon sites. Would that be a fair comment? That would be fair. Okay. And Richard um, is currently in uh, Thailand. Uh, yeah, I, I know the background. All right. Um, we've only got six questions tonight. We can have our green room after uh, Tim. And um, all right, so let's um, have a look at it. The, the first one uh, is um, from Francois, Francois Pierre Marcel. Uh, it's titled, Does Googlebot uh, Parse JavaScript? Uh, Francois Pierre said, um, in React pages, there is a script tag which generates all attributes inside a script. Um, I won't try and read that, but um, he said prop the properties of the document goes there. Um, and inside these properties, there are URLs, but as a JSON uh, object. Does anybody know if Google is tracking um, these uh, URLs uh, as well or not? I presume this is asking if Google's going to parse this. They will, but historically we were led to believe that Google was quite good at parsing JavaScript, and then we eventually found out that in some cases there's a, quite an overhead, and therefore this, this parsing is queued, and it may not actually happen immediately. It may happen hours, days, weeks, or even longer after the crawl of the page. So in general, what Google says is they advise you to use what they call dynamic rendering which is server-side render or pre-render of JavaScript apps, um, which you serve to Googlebot, and then you serve your JavaScript app, your plain JavaScript app, to, to regular users. So, yeah, you, you might find that this, this will work for very static sites, um, but if you have a very large dynamic site, like news sites or anything where there's a, the, the, the velocity of content is very high, um, Google advises not to use JavaScript to pre-render or server-side render your JavaScript app. Um, otherwise, they may not actually see the links, these links in time to, re to, to crawl them and to, to, to crawl, render, and then to index them. It may take a long time. Thank you, Richard. Anybody else? All right. Um... It's funny, there's just one thing that goes in mind there about the fetch and render. The thing, the difference with the fetch and render is that it actually renders in real time. So you can actually use fetch and render on a JavaScript page and it may well render, um, but that doesn't mean that, that the regular crawler will, will render it in the same time frame. So you've got to be a little bit, this is again where there was a sort of a, a lack of information, I think, from Google about how this all worked. So. You cannot assume that even though the, the, the fetch and render, even though it can render the page, you cannot assume that the same thing will happen when the regular Googlebot comes to your page. There could be quite a delay. And 
that might not be good again as i said for for very large or dynamic sites that's not great and like i've worked with some really big sites that have moved to to javascript frameworks and the outcome hasn't been pretty so i i would definitely look google have documentation if you look up uh, dynamic rendering and um, you'll see, you'll find a google documentation around that and they give some uh, they give yeah a lot of information about what they expect and what they believe is okay Thank you, Richard. All right, let's um, move to number two on our uh, run list. Um, this one from Scott Hodgkiss. Scott said, my traffic is down 70 plus percent. Uh, he said, uh, the Google Search Console pages excluded 1.34 thousand pages. I had a massive drop in rankings, but not for the pages excluded. Um, he said, one, uh, uh, 134K excluded since the 24th of October. Uh, two, um, URL inspection index not submitted in sitemap. I don't know what he means by that. Three, crawled, not currently indexed, status excluded. What I have checked, he said, one, robots text is not blocking the URL. He said, I did submit a, a sitemap, but it's a WordPress website and all the pages excluded are PHP custom pages and not in the sitemap. I don't think that matters. He said, I, I've checked uh, all on-page SEOs, but nothing. Um, some pages are indexed, but some are not. Has anyone had this issue? Please, my traffic is down 70 plus percent. I now also created a sitemap for those pages and submitted. Thanks, Scott. So there was an issue when things were moving across to mobile. Um, essentially, uh, desktop version was de-indexing, and mobile version was indexing. Um, that may have been an issue, but it doesn't explain why the 70% drop in traffic. Um, yeah. I, I'm gonna. I'll have a. I'll have a little go on this one, right? So first thing is, right? He mentions 134k are excluded, and he said that the he had a massive drop in rankings, but not for the pages excluded. Well, just to make the point that yeah, they're excluded, which means they're not in the index. So he's not going to get any drop in traffic, organic traffic to those pages because they're excluded. So that's the first thing to say. The second thing to say is he's talking about a WordPress blog. So these aren't pages that are excluded, okay? This report is URLs that are in excluded. So URLs can be excluded for a number of reasons, okay? They could be redirects, they could be, it could be soft 404s, it could be various other things. But when you tend to see 134K excluded, and this is a WordPress site, there's very few WordPress sites that are very big, okay? And he mentions these are custom PHP pages. My guess is that a lot of these may not be real pages, okay? And that a lot of these pages either may be, like I said, soft 404s, thin content, low quality content. You need to go into this. You need to start digging and seeing is there a theme in terms of the pages they're excluding and see, because what happens is Google bot will go in and they might see that there's like 10,000 pages in a section that are low quality and they'll stop crawling after three or 4,000 pages. And they'll just decide, I'm not going to crawl any more of the 6,000 that we know about because they're all junk. To me, it, it strikes me, now again, I'm just making it, just throwing it out there. It, I can't tell because I can't look at it. But it, to me, it sounds like it's probably a quality issue. And again, this 70% drop, when did he have the 70% drop? Was it around some of these algorithm, algorithmic updates recently? Most of these were around quality. I've worked with some sites that have dropped and some sites that have gone up dramatically and very often it tends to be that they have an awful lot of junk like millions of pages that are excluded and what you really need to do is you need to call these pages that's the best way to go about it not no index them not robots.txt them just scrap them get rid of them all together as long as they're junk but that's what I would look for thank you Does anyone have a comment on sitemaps? Um, you know, that, that, that they've, you know, when like Scott had this issue and uh, automatically felt that, that he had to produce a sitemap. Um, 
Uh, are sitemaps really useful in any situation? No, or debugging. Yeah, because what you do is, okay, if you start to create a really good, if you've got a really large site, for smaller sites, it doesn't really matter, but really large sites, you set up a very well-defined sitemap structure. So you set up sitemaps for folders or types or whatever it is, you submit them to Google, and then you can actually run the reports, and you can, you can slice and dice the Google Search Console reports based on a sitemap. And then you start to see all these insights into what types of pages Google really hates or dislikes or marks as, you know, you know, uh, some of the excluded for whatever reason. Some of the different reasons they give give you insights as well. That would be the one thing I would say about the sitemap, seeing which what site areas of your site Google actually likes to index and which ones they dislike. That's probably the best thing about sitemaps. If you've got a really good site, if you've got a really good site structure. Generally speaking, you shouldn't really need XML sitemaps, but at the same time, getting the debug information back from Google Search Console can be really, really useful, Like especially when you're up to multi-million page sites, because then it gets really difficult to figure out what the hell is going on. Thank you, Richard. By the way, I must also call out uh, people like Martin, oh, sorry, Michael Martinez and uh, Roger Monti, who have, um, Put a lot of work into this thread um, as well. Um, we are very grateful for our uh, forum heroes that um, step up to the plate uh, every day and answer questions as they are asked on our uh, group uh, uh, on Facebook and also the SEO questions community on Google+. You know, sorry, I'm just reading some of those comments. I'm just seeing like he's putting no follow to all his job listing pages. I don't know why he'd do that. I mean, you know, he probably needs to go back and start to think about like, is his site what Google wants to show people? Like, if he's shown the same job listings as every other job site, that's not going to work. There's no value add there. And then adding all this internal no follow, like no follow people. I don't think really people. And it's an, again something where there was a dearth of information from Google. They, they don't. They don't let us know until recently how they treat no index. They say long term no index. They treat as no follow. Like we didn't know that until recently. I mean, that's something that new that's come out of them. Um, but like this guy is using no follow a lot on his site, and no follow may not. It may not do what he thinks it does. You know, no follow doesn't stop them indexing. You know, they may say, okay, we're not going to follow that that link. But they they may still try and grab some of these URLs, especially if there's links from elsewhere or within the site or from external sites. It's yeah, and he got the Yoast bug. So I've worked with a couple of sites with the Yoast bug, and yeah, that was pretty nasty. But as long as you you took the remedial action that Yoast suggested with their purge plugin, it tended to revert. Um, like this guy's got it all going on, but I'm really interested to know how he's got 134 or 35,000 pages in PHP. Did he give his? Uh, oh, he did give his URL. Yeah. I just, I'm just curious, just quickly. That's not it. Hang on. Um, While well, Richard is looking at that, Tim, uh, how was the um, summit? The Google summit. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Too short, too short. But it, I suppose it was technically classed as a regional, so it wasn't a long, you know. But anyway, yeah, it was good fun. I, I saw those photos of you with all of those girls. Hey, those no, those are my um, the, the those are the GMB team. It's not my fault. What did he say? Sorry, did he say those are my? And then he. <laughs> <laughs> what was the my? What was possessive? What was the possessive? That, the possessive? that GMB uh, that is the GMB team. It's not my fault that they happen to be um, of a female gender. It's a shame that it's a crying shame. <laughs> Um, just having a quick look at his site, okay. Google is saying they've got about thirteen hundred results from that from that domain. Like, where are the hundred and thirty five thousand pages coming from? Like, if they are the job listings, he probably wants to do a better job of blocking them in some way or not letting letting Google in. I I'd probably use robots.txt rather than use this no follow. Don't let them crawl this junk. Yeah. 
Okay, Scott, um, that's your lot. Um, and I hope uh, you found uh, a contribution useful. All right, uh, Mimi Gill um, wants to know, should I remove numbers uh, in the URL? Uh, um, she said, I have a website in which uh, all the pages end in a long number. For example, uh, my, mydomain.com slash gallery slash 470-8267. Why uh, is this and should I change it for SEO purposes? If uh, No, it's not an issue. I mean, if you were starting from scratch um, and it was new, um, then you know the ideal bit would to be have a more descriptive URL for that particular page. Um, I, I see you say gallery, so it might be a particular image. So it would be then forward slash uh, pink fluffy elephants. Um, but you know Google can understand these. You know Google understands these. Search engines understand these. You know, uh, if you were starting from scratch, that would be a nice option. Um, your cms i know people are mentioning cms but some cms is like for example wordpress uh you can actually select the kind of um uh the kind of type of url but that doesn't look uh no i don't think you you, you could actually switch that one um but if you did go and change them i mean that would be a big thing you'd be literally 301 redirecting every single and i don't know how big your site is but let's say, you know, it's a gallery, let's say there's images, let's say you've got 500,000 images in there. You would be literally be uh, having 500,000 301 redirects in there, which eh, not ideal, you know. Um, but Google understands this kind of thing. As long as, you you know, your title's correct on the page, you've got an accurate description of it, you've got some decent content describing the image or whatever the images may be, uh, or the painting and what it's painted out of you know a good a good you know bit of content about it and you know uh, search engines understand it um i don't know what the gallery is let's say it's painting you know you could also use structured data markup as works of art um or 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 etc to to provide uh, additional insight but no that's not going to be an issue interestingly just this is completely random off there um i noticed uh, uh how google Google picked up a, or it wasn't a bug. I, I don't know how they actually did it, but someone had a number in the URL reported this week. And for some reason, there was review, uh, there was aggregative review markup on his site. And for some reason, Google had taken his, the number in his URL and thought that was the number in his uh, reviews, review count. And we're showing like 135,247,000 reviews in the, in the search results. <laughs> so, but I mean, that's nothing to do with this one, but I'm just saying no. Um, no, as long as your page is uh, correctly structured, um, you've got all the content on there, you know, you've got a decent title, description, product, content. No, it's, it's not a problem. There are tons of sites. Millions of sites still out there that still use it. Um, it's, it's it's not an issue. Yep, I agree. All right, so let's um, um, move on to the next. This one, it's number four in our run list from Thomas Patrick McKee, um, who looks like he likes uh, a Cuban cigar. Um, he said, please tell me a story about duplicate content. He goes on to say, if I put up a post on my website and put the same post on my, uh, on my HTTPS uh, business.google.com site, um, would Google consider it duplicate content? Uh, would there be a chance of being penalised? Uh, it was a young boy called Tom. And Tom built a website. He did say, tell me a story. <laughs> Go ahead, Tim. Uh, no, no, uh, because uh, so what I'm saying, so you put a post, you've created a blog post on your site, then you're going into your GMB, you're creating a Google post, you're saying, uh, you know, you chuck in an image, you give a brief little intro into what the article is about, um, whether it be a guide on pink fluffy elephants, and then you 
you know your click through your 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 CTA, you know your CTA that you're selecting is learn more or buy now a book or whatever, and then you you're linking it through. No, um, so firstly, those uh, Google posts, um, those Google posts, firstly aren't indexable. Um, but now you did say using a Google site, so I'm assuming that you're saying you are running a Google. Uh, biz, uh, you know, on a business dot site, you've got one uh, published and live, and I'm assuming you're talking about those ones that are pulled through then onto the things. Um, no, uh, because in a sense, if you're linking through to it, you're attributing to where it came from, so it's not going to be seen as um, you know you're essentially attributing to it. Uh, secondly, I don't know if you've noticed how long those uh, business sites take to be um, updated. You know, it might not find that post um, for quite a few months. Um, so yeah, so uh, posted to a Google business listing. Okay, yeah, so if you're only talking about the business listing, no, those aren't indexable. Um, image and content sometimes found, but literally we cannot get any of those URLs to be literally be indexed. I think uh, I think Googlebot is probably well actually from Google My Business and a bot. Um, I think they do read it because I have had um, images actually indexed in image search. Um, but because no, this no, it's not going to be treated. It's the same as social media. Would my social media be treated as a duplicate if I was posting an article? N no, Google kind of understands what you're doing. You know, um, it's not going to be treated as duplicate. And equally, you're not publishing the whole post. You're not publishing the same, you know, the same title, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's not actually on a website. Even if it was the business.site, if you created one of those, uh, you're still attributing it back with that link back to the, to, 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 to the main thing. And I think Google can understand patterns when they see these things. They can understand that this is the same business that's, you know, pointing us to there, to sharing this kind of content, this update, this product, or this event, whatever you're doing on on your on your GMB. No, it's not going to be treated as duplicate. I'm not I'm not familiar with GMB. You know, it's just somewhere I don't go. But I'm just curious. So, like he is saying, like his suggestion is that he's gonna he's gonna post. He says I put the post on my website and put the same post on GMB. Like he's not he's not posting snippets or. Extracts or excerpts or anything. He's not made the well, whole post. Yeah. Okay. So we'll figure it out. Like, I, like I'm sure they should, but at the same time, we all know that, like, sometimes one part of Google isn't really talking to another part of Google. And I'm just wondering. I'm curious. Could it ever be that they look at their own business.google.com domain and go, "Oh well, you know, let's apply our our algorithms here and." You know, where are we going to send the traffic to? Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not suggesting you're wrong. I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, the Google, um, the Google post isn't isn't on a URL. Right. It's posted within a search query. Let, let, let me, um, and you can. So uh, let me find one quickly, and then I will. No, I know, I know what they're like. I know they appear in the knowledge box or that area, the local box over on the right. Uh, yeah. Are they published? They're not, and they're not published anywhere else. That's the only place they are actually physically available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's and when you click on it, it comes up as a search query. But right. Google is crawling these in that sense that they're understanding it. Um, because, like I said, I've managed to have I've seen images, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, that in, appear yeah. for that particular query that I titled the post as. But in terms of the content, it's well, it just wouldn't appear as an URL anywhere, you know, in in that sense. So even if you do, like, if you pick up a string, like a sentence from one of these posts that you know is unique, and you put it in quotes, will you get anything back? Do you know? Uh, well, if uh, no, um, like, I, I, like I, I'm literally, I'm just curious about how, how like, I, obviously, I've seen this this post, and like, it's it's an interesting feature. I'm just curious whether there's anywhere, whether there is any other front end that Googlebot is polling in some way to figure out like what's on this, or whether it's just completely a back end system they pull into the SERP. 
you know, from GMB or whatever. It's, I don't know whether you see enough. You know, it's funny that people, I don't know whether people, like, I'm going to say people, I mean, like, SEOs. Like, I'm sure. sure there's plenty of SEOs who only look at GMB, but it's something I don't see a lot of, you I've know, put one in of the conversation chat. around. I've put one in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's how it appears. It's actually in a search query. Ah, it's a modal. Yeah, one of them. Okay. And then and then tell me so, but and these are from your site. So are you're not are you publishing these on your own site as well? Yeah, well, yes, because th that is I've published that on my site. Uh, that, yeah. that that was a that was an update, you know, yeah. uh, an updated article, and then that was posted as a post. Of course, there's a link going through to you know view more. Um but of course these can be other things so the google post can also just be an image and some content it, you can have events so you would have an event saying um you know uh, whatever presentation on this amount of date book now you would link to your book now button or you could have a product so this is my t-shirt this is the description this is the cost there's various different kinds of uh, posts but essentially they're all displayed the same way like it's just like I'm looking at it, right? So I just did a search for the first sentence, and like I can see that you're obviously you're putting this in a few different places, but your site is getting outranked by Google Plus. Yeah, my <laughs> actual Google Plus. Yeah. But it's also yeah. been outranked by Facebook. Uh, not for me. My it is for me. Yeah, maybe that's because I'm over yeah. in Asia. So that might make sense. But I'm getting yeah, business I'm... at Facebook.com. Yeah. Uh, and I get various other. Facebook.com uh, subdomains UK local SEO dot business dot site dot business dot site that isn't that isn't Google that right? is, is yeah, that that Google? is. so yeah. if I go to that is that your GMB page like look uh, I just got a 404 when I go to that actually funnily enough yeah because that one I I I've, I'm doing I'm running a test on on that and I actually changed the the URL on it so that's no longer in existence so. Um, but but that means that there is a page for these. Sorry, I know we're we're eating time here, Jim. By the way, I'm just it's just no, my curiosity. Let me find a let me let me find a new one that uh, may not have been no that was probably shared that was probably shared. Mm. Yeah, like that's it's just like I'm looking at the cache and it's like it is really just a text. It's like updates local. And it's just a snippet and a learn more. It looks like it's identical. So they are crawling it from somewhere. Yeah, it's interesting. But I honestly don't think this is going to be treated as. Now, um, hang on. Let me. Yeah, but I, I couldn't get that without. I had to click on. We have 10 more. We have more results, but we're not showing them. We, I had to get them to show me the more results to see. Ah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're filtering that out as, as duplicate. Now, in that case, they're filtering the right Earl, but yeah. Well, the one of the earls, but let me find one that. Like, I'll tell you what. I'd be just coming back to the original, the original question here. What he might want to do is make sure that he's posting stuff to his own site first and giving it a day or two to let Google pick it up before he's posting it to or syndicating it to other sites. Local SEO. Uh, let's look at this one. Okay, so here's one. Uh, let me take this one, which was actually a page in the site, which is, yeah. So, so this one's never been posted to, you know, other places. This was a page in the site promoting that particular page, right? Mm -hmm. And here's an actual page from that. View page source, uh, canonical. It has a canonical. There's no robots. So hang on. This is one that you said is. That was just using a post where it was just a promotion of an actual page on site. Right. OK. So, um, so if I take the first sentence, OK. 
and yeah. then it was only ever it, you know it obviously there was it was you know uh, but it wasn't actually pushed out like a, an actual shoot uh, uk so it must have come from them and then they have and their their business page their business.site page is indexed and ranking also for that for that sentence funny you know i mean uh, i'm guessing there's no really the internal architecture though of those business sites isn't great i'm guessing i'm saying they're very it's very basic but uh I, I'd have to imagine that if you if you pushed it to them first and they index it, and you don't have a link going back to your own site, no citation of any description, eh, I'm not so sure that uh, that you could always rely on them, especially for a new site. Yeah, I suppose the question would make sure it's indexed on your site first. Like, okay, sorry, I take it back because that business dot site they have a learn more link with all these updates which i presume i presume yeah it's a followed link in fairness no refer <laughs> you can't even get your the refers for your for your ga jesus it's a follow link so yeah okay it's probably fine No, Tell me when thing. you're actually posting this to the Google to the business dot site there the GMB site, do you have to have an URL or can you just can you can you post a post without a, an, an URL to the, the yes the, yes you uh, can post it without an URL but um, the, the Thomas over here doesn't say that he's actually got a business dot site. Those uh, okay. you can you can the ones that I've shown you I have actually activated not as the site's main site but just as a as, as kind of a citation yeah um but he, he uh, i'm assuming thomas doesn't have one in running so essentially his would just be that kind of search query pop-up sort of blob oh okay so you can have it yeah i understand what you mean well we don't know but he does say i put the same post on my business.google.com site hmm Anyway, I mean, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I, I, at the same time, I'd be, I'd still be inclined to, to post stuff on your own site first and let them pick it up. And that probably goes for all the, the anywhere where you might syndicate. Like, you know, if you're syndicating it to Facebook or to, to Twitter and it's public, like just some of those queries from your stuff, Tim, you can see like Facebook is there, Twitter, well, I don't know what yeah. Twitter was there, but um, Google Plus. Anyhow. Sorry, I, I, Jim, my apologies. Uh, I just completely took this over. You're more than welcome. <laughs> more than welcome. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I was uh, fascinated to listen to it all. Will, will we call this one covered then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number five on our run list is from Mark Johnston. It doesn't look like Mark in that photo. Um, anyway, he's, uh, it's titled, Can You Rank in the Top Three on the Google Map Pack? Um, Mark goes on to ask, uh, can you rank in the top three on the Google Map Pack if you have more than one business under the same address um, with the city you want to rank for? Or do you need a physical premise in that town slash city? Okay, so it all depends on how far out you are. Um, if you are literally 100 miles away, you know, your address is 100 miles away from the city that you've got. Let's say you've, you've got a, a location page within your, in, in your, within your site for that city, um, and you're 100 miles away, uh, you know, it's going to be very, very, very difficult. However, <laughs> however, um, I'm assuming if you wanted to rank in a thing, you know, a city 100 miles away, 15 miles away, 20 miles away, that you are a serviced area business, right? Uh, I, I'm guessing that. So Google this very week, uh, it's not 100% it's not rolled out yet. But if you're a service area business, what you're going to notice is that when you log into your dashboard, your address will all of a sudden be missing. 
it'll say add address, which is a bit confusing because then you're going to think, oh, I better add my address again. But no, you don't need to. What it's doing is they are removing the actual, you know, the previous. So if you said I was in um, Chelsea, London, it would just remove your actual main, uh, you know, your actual physical address and just say uh, Chelsea, London, and then a postcode. Well, they are actually removing that. So what you need to, what you can do now with service area businesses is you can literally select the cities or or towns or specific areas that you want to serve, right? So now you can specify that you serve that particular city, whether it be 50, 100 miles away, and it won't actually show your other, your, your originating address. And GMB says, now we'll have to wait and see on this, but GMB says that by doing this, they are going to allow service area business to, to have an equal opportunity to position themselves within a particular area. Right. Um, so that should be taking care of the GMB's kind of sort of ranking factor as in proximity. So what you're then going to need to be doing is working on um, your on-site kind of signals. So you're going to have to have a great location page for that particular city, uh, what, what services you offer into it, which guys, I mean, you know, you might have different, different guys on the team that work in that city, who's going to be working in that city. Do you offer all the services or is the services in that city limited to that? Create a really great location uh, page. I would also probably work on maybe creating like a projects page in the site or case studies or our work and have one um, categorized for that particular city and any jobs you pick up, then they, you know, you create uh, jobs that people can view um, that you've done in that particular city. And that's how you would rank for that. Um, so, yeah, I think I've answered you. Uh, in theory, I'm assuming you're SAB and there's this new thing coming out now. Um, it's a bit confusing. You know, it may not have happened. If you look in your dashboard, you may still see your address. What's going to happen, and um, uh, it'd probably take a little bit of time to for completely roll out, but one day you'll log in and it'll just say add address. Well, don't go in and add it again. It's bad messaging from GMB. If you go in and add it again, it triggers a re-verification. Um, they should just remove. They should just remove that. It's just going to cause cause issues. It's bad messaging. Um, but what you will need to do now, instead of using a radius, you need to select the actual physical location. So you can either just say, I select you know, an entire state or county, depending on what country you're in, or you can literally select specific towns, villages, or cities that you want to, that you can service. So in, in, in that instance, that's going to take care of the GMB location based proximity issue which is which is a very nice interesting thing <laughs> coming from them but i can see this is just going to create quite a bit of spam at the same time also thank you tim all right uh, mark johnston uh, i hope um, you find that useful vincent chen's asked a number of questions of us in the last few months uh, this one is titled Reasons for Ranking Drop. Vincent said that what reason can lead to the homepage ranking of the website uh, dropping from the first page to page 17, or at least the first position to position 17. I don't know which. Um, he said that by searching my website name, I found that the ranking was from the first place to the sixth place. On the Google Webmaster platform, it said the homepage URL um dropped to 17. um yeah that's that's his question uh, what, what do you think guys you have to read some of the comments also like he says it's it's he dropped from four million pages index to three hundred thousand in the last three months he mentions i mean that's a big Big flag, anyway. That's for sure. Um, 
What else does he say? Uh, last time you tell me the site should not have no follow attributes. I do that too. Index cover reward that is some product detail page excluding a lot. Um, uh, just not index how crawled. Yeah, I mean, you could lick your finger, hold it up to the wind to guess a reason for this, but probably Google just doesn't like a site like it used to. It's as simple as that, I would say. Um, and it's an eBay store, apparently, but like having 4 million euros in your eBay store, likelihood that he's actually offering any of these himself, probably, I'd assume, zero. But I could be wrong. I mean, that's that might be unfair, but... Um, there's very few companies that are offering four million or even a million or even a hundred thousand different products. So um, so what's his site called? Jotrin uh, Jotrin Electronics. Oh, okay, well in fairness maybe he is selling a lot of these. I I put in Jotrin and I get him at number one. But he's only got 4,335 results in his all listings on eBay. So it begs the question, like, how could he have had 4 million euros indexed? Oh, I take it all back. I'm getting his eBay site at number one, I presume. And now I see his own site. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, 60, 68,000 results. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this is this is sort of like what I would say is probably a mega site. Very difficult to say why his site has gone down. He probably needs somebody to to do some work to do some to evaluate what's going on with his site. You're not going to answer these questions by just looking at it quickly. This would be a good site. What I mentioned about the strategy with XML sitemaps earlier. This would be the perfect site for setting up really a really well structured XML sitemap setup, so that you can see exactly what they like, what they don't like. And this is also the sort of site where you probably want to be doing log file analysis of some description to see what they're what they're crawling and what they're not. Yeah, for some reason or other, nobody ever bothers to um, a analyze their raw logs anymore, or at least nobody that I've heard of. It, that's really, I think a large part of that is because it's just bloody difficult to do. I mean, they're so clunky. I mean, it's a system that hasn't changed in God knows how long. And, okay, there's some, some people are getting clever now, and they're starting to actually log everything to databases, which makes it easier. But um, it's, it's just not easy to actually to parse and analyze these files. I mean, there are a couple of tools now, like Botify are doing it pretty well. And they, they give you some pretty good reports. But... Like, to set that up, you've got to actually basically FTP your log files over to them. And, like, you know, that's not trivial. And then you've got the security issues with that and all the rest of it. You've also got um, Screaming Frog of a tool that actually will parse your log. It's a, you know, a client-based tool that you can run on your own computer. But, you know, the problem is with these big sites is that these log files can be bloody massive. Like, you know, you can be talking about sending, like, gigabyte files of, of just just your logs. So... You know, it's it's a it's a sort of very clunky system. And mm. that was an historical system, but like I say, it hasn't changed in God knows how long. So it's probably right for someone to come along and d disrupt by saying, "Why right, let, let's let us log this in a different way." Well, the, I mean, the person that um, could do it easily would be the the host, and, and uh, I mean, it was only 10, 10 or twelve years ago that. Um, it was standard um, for hosting, uh, 
that they'd advertise it as a feature. Um, but for some reason or other, um, there's no demand for it anymore. Um, I think demand is growing actually, and it's probably growing out of SEO. You know, but again, the the main demand for this is when you get really big sites where you know it can make a huge difference to your site, your internal architecture, and you know the content you're publishing. And um, with a site this big, you, you know, you can never be sure what you're doing. Like you think you're doing stuff, and then someone will go and audit your site, and they'll find that you're actually publishing a couple of million URLs that are are junk. You know, that aren't doing any good. Um, but you know, I mean, it's it's very difficult to say with a site like this. Really, this isn't the sort of thing where you can just go and ask people, "Why is my ranking dropped?" Your site, if your site is a couple of million pages, like you're, you know, you're going to get different answers from different people, and the chances of any of them actually being right are probably slim to non-existent. Fair enough. All right, uh, I hope uh, Vincent Chan is is happy with our uh, contribution. And it looks like it's that time again. It's thank you for watching time. And uh, um, for those of you that um, hear me saying this, thank you very much for your interest. Uh, your interest in what we do makes what we do worthwhile. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but for now, it's uh, good night and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>